Um, I shaved my armpits this morning and they are like, I don't know if my razor was dull or what, but the shit is burning. Ooh, like, you know what I mean? Worst. There's no. no bumps, but it's like on fire. No, that's the worst. Like my right pit. I just want to itch it, but I know if I itch it, it will hurt. I did it actually two days ago. Actually, yesterday I shaved my armpits and I cut my armpit. And I'm like, Gosh. Actually, I don't think I've ever done that before. What? Cut my armpit now. Oh, I have. Cut so many. the yeah. area. Yeah, the multiple times. But my armpits, I don't really think so. You know what I've been cutting a lot recently? Is whenever I use my little face razor, I have been doing it at a bad angle. And I don't realize it until I like look like I'm like doing it and it's all going good. And then I like look up and then it's just like blood just starts coming out. I'm like, how did I even do <laughs> I that? I haven't used a face razor in a minute and I probably should. Uh, but like I haven't either like frequently i was doing it like every couple of weeks to just stay on top of it and then the other day i was like doing my eyebrows and i looked in the mirror and i had a fucking unibrow and i was like oh see time i <laughs> my eyebrows are to the point now because i like wanted them to grow out so bad that i need to go get them waxed mm -hmm. but the problem with nashville is like pricing for like anything beauty is just stupid it's so expensive like why am i gonna spend Nothing? 35 dollars yeah. on my eyebrows wax it's crazy yeah i'm and for them to not even look that good. Yeah. Like I had a girl, like the girl who used to do my Brazilians, she does them and she does them well. But like, I don't want to like ask her just to do my eyebrows. You know what I mean? Because mm -hmm. it's like, those are like a tack on service. Yeah. It's, it's almost like, like you're already in there. Might yeah, as hey, well. Might as well. And it's but like, like cheaper or whatever. Yeah. But like, I feel like it's a waste of her time mm -hmm. for me to just like book an eyebrow appointment. Yeah. No, it's not. Know. That's, that's you being like trying to take up a little space. It's yeah. okay. She's getting paid regardless. I know, but like, you know, also, I don't know. wouldn't you rather do somebody's brows than open their vagine and do that? Probably. Yeah. But also like less money. True, but quicker. Qu true. You know right, what I mean? Right, so right. you can, you can fit Like if she's already going to be there, like yeah. it's not even a big deal to like squeeze me in for 15 minutes. Right, exactly. Yeah, that's true. Maybe yeah. I'll just hit her up because she's really good. Mm -hmm. And like, I think what I've realized with my eyebrows is, so last time I, okay, this was literally like, I haven't gotten my eyebrows waxed in probably like five years mm -hmm. because the last time I went to like get them waxed, it was like after my Brazilian. And I asked the lady, I was like, hey, can you just like do my brows? And she was like, honestly, girl, your brows look so good. I wouldn't touch them if you paid me. And I was like, what? Good I am is, paying you. Like, you just fucking. Good news is, I don't have to pay you. Yeah, but you I was so too I was just like, what, but I am offering to pay you. Like, just fucking wax them. And she was like, no, they look really great. And they didn't look good. And they still don't look good because I don't know how the shape should look. But I need a professional to just do it for me. Yeah. Because I feel like eyebrows change the look of your face so dramatically but because I don't know what shape looks good on my face, whenever I pluck them, it, it always looks weird. Yeah, I always like I'm, I'm scared. scared to something's like over, always a bit off, right? And I'm scared to over pluck them because I'm like, I don't want to have thin eyebrows, and that's Same. always been a thing of mine. So like, mine are bad right now. My issue is like when I like I trim them, mm -hmm. so like I'll like brush it up and then trim it and like you know get that See, line I up. So when I do like a fluffy trimmed. brow, it like just stays up. But the last time I did that, I cut it too short. <laughs> So it was like, I was like too short on one side. So it's like, fuck, I got to do it on the other. Right, no. And so the grow back has been not good. Yeah, no, that's the thing is like, I actually don't have like uh, scissors right now to trim them. Mm. I lost them. I don't know where they are. So mine's just straight plucking and like my eyebrows are so long. So when I go to like gel them. Yeah, they're like touching it's your like, hairline. They're line. so <laughs> high up that I have to like literally scoop them to the side. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm like, they would look so much better if I like trim them just like a little bit. Mm -hmm. So like, I don't know. But yeah, no, I feel that. But mm -hmm. minor opposite issue. Yeah. Too long. Yeah. yeah. I want, I, I would like to, uh, to get mine tinted too because my eyebrows are way lighter than my hair. Honestly, you and know what I used to do? And I haven't done it in a minute, but when I dye my hair, sometimes I just take the dye. But mm. men's beard dye. Yeah. That's what I do. That's what I've heard. It's cheap, simple, easy. Yeah. And then you have like a whole tube of it and you can like reuse it. But going to get them tinted by somebody is like, I've done it. It's kind of a waste of money. It totally is. But at, when I was in high school, I, in college, I got my eyebrows done like every like three weeks or whatever. Yeah. And they would tent them for $5. And my eyebrow waxing was like 15. So the whole thing was 20 bucks. Oh, I would do it then too. And so I was like, this is no brainer. No, where I would go, you have to pay, at least in Nashville, I've only seen you, you pay for it. And then they like shape them. They don't wax them. They only like shape them up. Oh, interesting. Yeah. 
stupid. Well, anyways, hopefully your guys' eyebrows look good. <laughs> yeah, ours <are. laughs> I'm going to say it. Have sex with a Scorpio. I could glue bridge your dad. I'm naked. Hold on. <laughs> we will be flicking the beans to that. <laughs> but she's tatted and I take meth. Is somebody in your house right now? But you know what? Fuck your ass. Yeah, I had sex last night. You can make your own money. You can literally have your own job of your dreams. You can own your own house. You can own your own car. You can pay all your fucking own bills. So what is that man? That man has sex and a best friend and that's it. I heard nothing but the truth. Not not today. Emily and I are on chill. Yeah, we're kind of kicking it old school. Uh, I didn't go into the office today. I feel like that's the the what determines this. Yeah. What I wear. It's like if I go into work, I dress up slash have my hair and my face done because like I'm going to the office. Right. Today, I did not. So I'm in uh, leggings or yoga pants, as the kids would say. Actually, the kids would call these flared leggings. Yeah, those are um, flared leggings. With a giant shirt and my old glasses because I stepped on my Warby Parkers. So... We're, yeah. we're even like matching glasses wise. Yeah, we are. We today. got those big black frames. That's how we like it. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, I didn't work today either. I never, I don't work on Tuesdays. Mm-hmm. So, I mean, I did like editing and stuff like that. And then I normally try to like catch up on like home things of yeah, like, like your cleaning chores and, and chores. Didn't have time today because I got I had a nail appointment today. Mm. And I was trying to have my nail appointment. What'd you get done? I just got a fill and then I got them brown. I was gonna Ooh, get them brown I like chrome, them. but the chrome wasn't chroming like right. It was like too much. Mm-hmm. And so I said take it off. It's like metallic y Yeah, and I didn't yeah. want that. I just wanted to be like a little bit so it's just because it was so dark. Like the Yeah. She didn't have anything like light enough to just like lay. Like a chocolate. Yeah. So mm-hmm. I don't know. I like them. I think it's like I nice like and them fall. Too. I know. I have like a dark purple. But yeah, I feel like the dark out. colors are in. This, like actually, season. my toes. I painted my toenails the other day, which I feel like you deserve a reward for painting your own toenails. I love that painting shit. My toenails. Is so hard. What? I love my it. butt falls asleep within five seconds. Okay, of like, so how do you do it? Because uh, the way that I do it is horrible. Okay, so I'm gonna show you how I do it. Yeah, right now. So if you're an audio listener, go to our YouTube channel and. <laughs> L- watch me do this okay but watch your whip and watch your nene okay so this is this is what i do okay you can you can i'll hold this so okay. that way you can have some audio okay. so typically typically i have a table right here right so if i'm downstairs on my couch right i have a table right here okay so then i curl up boom like, like it this yeah in a ball okay and i put my butt up and then i have my stuff here and i go like this and i like cut them like this angle okay yeah i or mean then i can go down and then you can bring your foot up and you can do it like this or you can bring it up like you can just move around but you have to have like a little corner okay to do it because it like stabilizes you oh uh, that okay then that's my issue because then, i was like i'm doing the same thing but it's uncomfortable right but you need to have like a little side mm, okay you need like the side of a chair gotcha. or something. and then if you need to like be propped up more you put the pillow on your butt and you can like oh uh, higher yeah gotcha that's how i do it no the way i was doing it was just in my bed which was bad <laughs> because it's like squishy so you're like falling <laughs> into it and i was sitting like this with my feet out here and i was doing like one foot at a time here but because it's in my bed not hanging over something it's like your so whole yeah it's and like and digging like in and so then i'm flaring my toes and i'm trying to hold it up and then like my toenails like hitting the side of my towel that i have down here mm-hmm. and it was a fucking shit show and i did dark red so i have a like my your bath red. towel that i used is white and it looks like somebody got killed on it because it was red fucking nail polish all over it like because at one point when i was doing my big toe i re- realized i did this and i smeared all of these <laughs> toes onto the onto the towel and then i was like god fucking damn it and i almost gave up but then so, i just was like so I that's finished. why you need to use like the corner of a chair or something no that's smart because i've never then, done that because then you can like lean and that that lean i really think helps you not move the toes no that's smart okay i never sit on this like this so i need to resituate myself there we go <laughs> like sitting like in a little ball yeah no uh painting your own toenail sucks it's uncomfortable as fucking hell and it deserves a reward especially like i can't imagine like like i'm a relatively flexible person so i can't imagine somebody who has like really tight like hips or like knees or hamstrings like you couldn't 
So I grew up with a mother who gave herself her own pedicure sometimes in her bathroom sink. Mm. Like, did, did was your mom like a counter get ready girl where she would sit in the sink like on the counter with the mirror up? Do you know? Like um, when she was younger? I don't know when she was younger because like her childhood bedroom had mm-hmm. a vanity in it. So I oh, feel like. So she no. like was a chair girl. Yeah. But like when she would always get ready for like work and stuff when I was like a little girl, she would just like lean over the counter. But then when she would do her toenails. She would sit on the counter and put her feet into the, like, sink. That and, makes like, sense. And, like, give herself a little pedicure. It was yeah. cute. Yeah. The, the girls who sit in their sink to get ready are wild. I don't really understand, like, the comfort. Like, how does that even work? I Also, I feel like you have to be, like, shorter than, like, five foot two. Yeah. Because for me, I'm not even tall. Like, I'm, I feel like, like five my butt four. would fill up the entire sink. I don't think... My, it's not my butt because let's let's like call it how it is i don't have a butt it would be like the width of my hips and like my butt bone would be on fire <laughs> like <laughs> the way what is that your coccyx or whatever the yeah fuck? no my, that shit would be piercing into the counter it would not feel good my butt would just be the full sink. i feel like those girls though are always like very fun like the girls who sit in the sink to get ready are always like the party girls <laughs> You know what I mean? Like they're the ones who are like controlling the music. They're like the ones getting who shit like going. crisscross applesauce on like their countertop to get ready. Nuts. That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Like they are another level of like just like the crazy wild. Was fun it, I friend. like they're like the crackhead friend. L- that yeah, yeah. Literally. I can I can envision them. Like they're like yeah, and they're always like we're a little. That's what I'm saying. They're yeah. like they're like the tiny like little monkey. Like like they're they're climbing up shit and doing crazy wild things. Yeah. Yeah. No, I just. I was going to wait until Thursday to get my nails done because I was like, okay, that way it's like I don't have like a stress of a day. Like I can like enjoy it. Yeah. And like also get all the things I need to get done on a Tuesday because like my Tuesdays are normally like jam packed of like everything. Yeah. That I have to do. This is really adulting though. Like let's be yeah. honest, like all the fun little chores that we used to do, you know, in college or high school when you don't really have like a nine to five responsibility all gets pushed to like one day and something as fun as getting your nails done turns into not fun yeah or like going to target or like doing all these little things it's like yeah i, I fucking hate this now no i know well actually and so, it sounds so like fucking first world problems like Ugh, i hate getting my nails done. yeah but really like that's the main reason why i still haven't gotten back besides the price i can't afford it but yeah that's the main reason i do it on my own because like when i do it i can have like my little me time like set my show up like get ready like, my girl's only 55 dollars, which is the mm. cheapest i found in nashville and that's with nail art yeah for a fill that's really good for fill and uh gel yeah so i that's why i'm like that's like My the one thing free yeah it's you and she's not very good <laughs> no you're actually really good at nails <laughs> but like i mean i don't really get my hair done like you get your hair done a lot more often than yeah. i do and stuff like that's so, like hopefully not anymore <laughs> well but the thing is like even like getting your bangs cut and like yeah, keeping, true, up, keeping true, up with true. it is like still money like yeah even yeah. though so like for me like the only thing i do for myself in that like way is like now my nails like, i don't yeah. even really get my hair done i dye my own hair mm-hmm. and like i'll let my hair go for a whole year before i get it cut again mm. i can't my well you also have like like nice hair like you have like thick hair Thank you. my hair is like fine so when shit gets too long it becomes like a weeping willow tree like you know how that shit's kind of see-through and like <laughs> stringy like that's what my shit i have very like. thick hair though so like no, that's, that's what i'm saying yeah. like you can hide like your like let's say if like your ends were like breaking or whatever it's not noticeable you people uh, yeah for no. me my shit it literally becomes transparent and like it is bad yeah like, so like it ha- i have to get a trim like every couple of weeks that's what i'm saying so i feel like everyone has like a thing that they pick for themselves even if yeah. it's like your starbucks in the morning like mm-hmm. i don't know everybody has a thing that and they mine do for used themselves. to be everything this is not me saying i'm like oh I'm, I'm a pick me i don't get anything done girl i used to get botox i used to get lip filler i used to get my hair done my nails done and spray tans like i would do it all yeah the only thing i never did was the eyelashes i never like i mean okay i wash my face way too aggressively to do eyelashes yeah i just like can't afford to keep up with the two weeks you have to do it every two weeks yeah and if you miss the appointment you have to buy a whole new set no there's no in hell oh and i never got hair extensions either but same if honestly like if i could afford it i would because i have finer hair so my thing about like hair extensions and eyelashes is it's way too much maintenance it really is like i'm not i'm not that girly like Mm -hmm. i'm the girly who loves like to have her nails done and yeah to get my hair done and have lip filler and like get a spray tan 
But like those are things that that's you like a quarterly. I don't have to keep up with any like, of that shit. Yeah. Like and my nails, I go to her. Mm-hmm. But between between appointments, I yeah. do nothing. Right? right. The hair extensions, yeah. Me out. Also, like for at least for like my past self, my current self, not that much because I'm not like miss fucking active as I used to be. But like when I was marathon training, like I can't imagine having hair extensions and like keeping those like good and the way i would wear my hair up because i would put in a high ponytail which i don't know if you can really do with like full. I mean, you would just see the track right and like i just feel like it would get matted and like, yeah well that, that's the thing like, you have to, like it, the way like, you have to like wash them and like take care of them yeah not for me like yeah. i just don't have uh, it let me tell you one thing that will make you never want to like do anything for yourself ever again it's getting bangs and like every single day having to style them and yeah. better yet, a mullet. Because let me tell you one thing. If you style a mullet wrong, it does give mullet indeed. It gives dog the bounty hunter. And like, <laughs> that is not the look I'm going for. I'm going for like chic 70s, like cool, like, m- like gender androgynous. Yeah. They, them. Yeah. And it, it, some days it's just straight up giving dog the bounty hunter. Yeah. No, I just, I don't know. I feel like, <laughs> like as you adult, like. Those little things. I mean, like, your mom tells you that when you're younger. Like, you won't care about none of this as you get right, older. Like, yeah, like, yeah, like, yeah, like, okay, do that no, now. No, it's so true. It's, like, I definitely want to get my lips done again. But, like, again, not something that's, like, maintenance between. Yeah. Like, visits. I look at old photos, though, of, like, <laughs> when I had my lips done. Like, I don't know if you even and I were even really friends when I had, like, my filler actively. You got them. The last time you got them done, we were friends. But she messed them up. Yes, yeah. it was like because my lady left and it was yeah. like a new girl and she was like, oh, like, do you want me to cancel the appointment? And I was like, no, we just keep it because it is at my home esthetician like in Arkansas and it is significantly cheaper there. So I was like, no, just keep it like whatever. And she fucked my shit up. Yeah, and it was bad. And yeah, so that was the last time. But that wasn't even like a full syringe. It was like a half or something. Yeah. And yeah, but when I got like my full whammer jammer lip filler, like every time. I look back on some of those photos and I'm like, it looks better now. Like, not that I, I do miss my upper lip being a bit bigger, but I look back on some of those and I was like, okay, <laughs> this is kind of a lot. Honestly, I think that some like filler isn't for everybody. And I think like overfilling lips happen so fast. Like oh, yeah. I, you don't even realize it when you're in it. Like, I mean, it's when the part of your lip that doesn't have color, like the part of your lip, that's not your lip. That's just your skin starts lifting that's when it's like you know you've gone too well far. you also have to like and get, it was like you also up. have to get them like dissolved between like at certain points you should get them dissolved if you like don't wait long enough mm. to like and i think that's when it like that's when it gets real bad but mm-hmm. some people just have like overfilled lips i'm like oh yeah oh crazy i don't know so we were like talking before this episode like a couple i guess it was two weeks ago or last week or well, last week was when halloween. was halloween last week okay so it was halloween and kellen had sent me this text message because she was out and she goes these girls are in bikinis and it was like 20 oh my god it was freezing i degrees? literally okay so <laughs> my friend was leaving like one of these girls that i work with like she was moving back to pennsylvania so it was like her going away party. wait that's like, weird are you from the same area uh she's on the other side of pennsylvania oh. but like it kind of like made us like friends because right, it was like, like oh huh. like we had like similar like upbringings yeah. of like things and yeah. like whatever and just like references to things right mm-hmm. so she was like moving back to pennsylvania like whatever whole story and this was her like going away like last hurrah in nashville type thing and um we go out it's halloween night right so people are already like in crazy costumes and like whatever like i also understand like a little bit more revealing it's halloween like i get it right but it's also like it's like 34 degrees. No, that night was like, it was below freezing. Like it was because cold. Because I remember leaving your house, because we recorded the episode on Halloween and I was driving home and I remember, because when you said bikinis, I remember like the moment when I'm driving in my car and you it was like, like 29 ding. degrees yeah, you like or that, something. Like freezing alert on yeah. your car. Yeah. So I like went shit out. Shit was cold. <laughs> yeah. I went out. I had on booties, like black booties with black um like leather pants Mm because i was like okay warmth and then i did a um a bandeau like black top 
And then I had a whole ass jacket on, like mm-hmm. whole ass, like pea coat, warm yeah. jacket on. And that's what I went out in, right? Like I wasn't dressing up because I was like, this isn't like we weren't going out to dress up. Like we were going out for like her last hurrah. So I was like, yeah, okay. it just happened to be Halloween. Yeah, exactly. So I was like all bundled up and like in the bar, like it was fine. But like I literally got to Broadway and bitches were walking in bikinis. Mm-hmm. And I was like, th- I immediately grabbed my phone and texted Emily. I was like, no fucking way because listen except this is what she said she said what did you say it made no sense it didn't i I wasn't even i didn't even drink yet it was so funny because i text back huh Huh? (laughs) let me find it it was so funny no i literally i'm walking i I didn't even drink yet like i literally just got there so Mm -hmm. it wasn't even like that (laughs) these girls i'm biking right now huh (laughs) bikinis and that's all you said (laughs) <laughs> i literally like reread it like six times i'm like am i missing something no like, and, and then i was like maybe she texted the wrong person no i <laughs> meant to fully text emily and she said afterwards bikinis <laughs> <laughs> i think my husband responded to you i had a couple drinks with me <laughs> <laughs> these girls on biking right now huh bikinis <laughs> i was like oh okay <laughs> and then the next day like, i told you yeah, 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 yeah but yeah no i literally was like okay that is where like i'm looking at them like a mom like no totally why like, the fuck would you go out on a bikini yeah in below freezing weather number one mm-hmm. number two like am i at the point where i'm just too old where like i'm not gonna like yeah no i'm sorry i'm picking warmth and comfort yeah over like hot sexy cold i'm not doing it anymore and i was like i told emily i was like i just feel like we are in a whole other like realization and era in our lives right now of like we're gonna do the sensible thing yes like i'm in my sensible like era i guess right. you could say that i'm hitting like well, uh, i'm no longer doing it for like the hot or the cool the photo the, the photo like no yeah fuck that i think the big difference is we are at a point in our life where if we are going to go out we have like actively chosen this yeah it's not a spur of the moment it's not a oh the girls convinced me i guess i'll go because there is no convincing if i'm not doing it i'm not doing it so like if i'm choosing to go out like i'm going to set myself up for success as best as i can and so here's the things that like i know are going to like help me achieve a good night Mm -hmm. and one of them is not being cold by also like not being too hot so like i'm like giving myself like it's like the I feel very like mom mode of like what's in my purse do I have everything like do I have the breath mitts do I have the hard candy do I have my water bottle yeah like the fact I brought my water bottle the other day with my friend to like a little thrift like it was like uh in east they did this boutique pop-up shop thing and I was like okay I need to pack my water bottle I need to pack some Tylenol I need to pack an an Adderall I need to pack a breath mint i need to pack. i'm like what the fuck you're going for like 45 minutes no literally i'm not gonna <laughs> lie i uh, my water bottle is like a safe thing for me like i always have to have it with me but, but the other day i, I made fun of my mom all, my yeah. whole life because she wouldn't get in the car without a fucking water bottle or a, a glass of water or something i'm like mom no that's me mom I've we're been going to the gas station we're coming right back you're not gonna be thirsty nope. she's like i have to have it yeah, same it's like an anxiety but thing. i like gave it, her it so much me. shit my whole like young life so listen so i actually bought this the other day i went to marshall's because girl math said i had to return something so i had to buy something right like but it ended up well because the fact you're returning it is that is really mature right like Like, that's really big that's adulting right but i was like i'm literally not gonna wear this and i'd rather have something like that yeah it just made more sense and i also wanted to have also returning to marshall's that's adult yeah (laughs) yeah <laughs> actively shopping at marshall's and then returning is very adult i though. like had a really great time i spent three hours in marshall's i went through every rack everything oh i just like had a day but th- honestly the deals were dealing like there was yeah. like zara in there there was like real good shit mm-hmm. in there and i spent way more than my return <laughs> yeah <laughs> <laughs> but it's okay because i got something for free yeah because of girl math right so um what was i where was i going with marshall's this? you went to buy something oh so when i was in there i got this like it's a technically like a gym bag and i love it it's like a little like purse it's like a small gym bag mm-hmm. so like you could use it as like a tote kind of thing yeah or, like, whatever. it's like a good like universal it's not like a duffel inside of it this is what sold me inside of it mm. is a strap to hold your water bottle up 
so you can put your water bottle in it and it's like a strap it like straps it in so it's not just like oh le- tumbling around yeah in, there. in your bag oh wow and it's a seatbelt. and thank you adidas for that i oh, bought it oh wow i bought it i had to have it nice i saw it and then i kind of i brought it home and i was tj like, maxx and marshall stays having like adidas shit in there though. yeah i came home and i was like this kind of might look like my mom's lunchbox but like i mm-hmm. also really fuck with it so right it doesn't matter because it's practical it's the practicality the of yes because yes. when you become a grown woman there is a moment in your life where you have to really think like is this worth it especially when you only have x amount of dollars to spend and you're telling me I not only have storage, but I have space for the most important person in my life, my water bottle. Yeah. It's like I'm sold. $25, take my money. Yeah. That's, a, that's a literally a bargain. Yeah. Like I'm, I'm just going to drop my one. money right here yeah. and we're going to go. Yeah, exactly. Practicality as you get older. And this is like, okay, so like that, those two things like really sparked this whole like topic of being like, what are things we are just not going to do anymore as adults? Yeah. It's like grown women. And a lot of these like go back to like club culture and going out days because like that's what we were thinking of at the time. But I feel like by us talking, we'll like think of other shit. Oh, one hundred percent. Um, yeah. So going out without a jacket just not gonna happen anymore. Okay. Like- so, but there was like this fear around this when I was in college. Like the reason I never went out with a jacket on was because in my head I was like, well, I don't want to hold this all night. Yeah, like it's embarrassing to hold the jacket. Yeah, and also like the way I went out in college, I like, I would lose it. The, well, yeah, and like what I'm doing when I'm going out as a college gal was definitely not standing in the corner like i'm not just chillaxing talking to yeah, friends same. like i'm busting it down on the dance floor yeah. i'm up there with the dj requesting like insane things and they're trying to push me off because they're annoyed i'm like bumping into like i'm leaning on the bar i don't need a jacket involved in yeah, the equation i'd agree so i feel like for then it made sense but uh, i think the main thing is like hoes do indeed get cold so like when you're in between bars and you're waiting in that line and it's fucking your tits are out your stomach's out your ass is out and it is 35 degrees just bring the fucking jacket like it's not cute and honestly like does it get you more men no it didn't do it like you know what i mean like it it wasn't doing what you thought it was gonna do and also the only thing that it really did was make me cold and like i feel like the men who did say anything about it was like you look freezing cold. Right. That's what I'm saying. Like, it didn't do what you thought it was going like, to do. Like, it, it was giving, like, dad. Like, yeah, like, when you Are when you we cold? Went out, you look freezing right now. And then I felt like that kid in gym class in, like, middle school or elementary school, like, at recess, who, like, would wear shorts and it was freezing outside and a t-shirt. And they'd be like, I'm not cold. I never get cold. I felt like I had right. to gaslight myself into being like, hosts don't get cold. They do. They do. They do, in fact. And my nipples are nipping. Yeah. No, I know. That's, that's what I'm saying. Like, it genuinely doesn't. When you think you're going out to like, ooh, this is me hot and slutty and boys are going to love it because I don't have a jacket on and like the jacket really, yeah. no, it doesn't. You just look kind of silly too. Yeah, you look silly. But I but I do understand the whole like, but what do I do with the jacket? I will yeah. say and like, when I went to uh, Boston to visit my friend once, we went to this bar and like, girl, I don't remember like what the vibes were. But it definitely wasn't like a dance, dance, twerk bar. But they did have a place for people to put their jackets because in Boston it's freezing all the time. So yeah, it's like coat you have north. to go, like you have to wear a jacket. No. It's like snowing outside. No. And up I was north like, you have coat checks. And I was you like, like, we need to we need to bring this shit to the south because yeah. it's not like it doesn't get cold here. It's just yeah. not always cold here. Yeah, no. A lot of places you go up there, like you get like a number like you give them your jacket Mm -hmm. and you either get a number and sometimes you have to pay for it and sometimes it's free but like yeah no they do that 100 and i was like this is so smart because also it wasn't like we were at like a bougie place like it was like just a normal like hole in the wall bar had that and yeah this is what we need but will i remember to come pick it up i don't know and like will i lose the number right yeah no but that's that is like a normal (laughs) thing up there that's actually a really smart thing to say because yeah yeah if you're up in the north most likely it's gonna happen right um wearing uncomfortable shoes for me 
this is so give and take because what am I? It really do, depends on what, what I'm trying am to I do. Doing? Yeah. Am I standing a lot? Am I walking a lot? Like on vacation, and we're gonna be like tourists and like walk around comfy shoes. I'm wearing mm-hmm. sneakers now. Like I'm not like the whole like I'm gonna be in these little flip flops that are gonna give me like blisters. No. Yeah. Absolutely not. Am I gonna go out and like the heels are gonna make my outfit significantly better? And we're most likely gonna sit most of the time. I'm gonna. Well, wear the also heels. let's be honest. Like your butt looks better in heels every time. Yes. And like you look. Like, I don't know if it's like the placebo or whatever, but I feel skinny. I feel tall. I feel like my ass I think it makes you ho- like, it makes is you like feel bigger. Good, the my, my posture is better because I'm like having to like acknowledge myself yeah. as like a human because I'm like feeling my feet. Like, I don't know. It does make you hotter when you have heels on. Also, it is severely uncomfortable. So I agree. It's like if I'm going to a concert, never. I'm always going to wear sneakers yeah. or like dogs like, like some sort comfy. of like flat cushioned yeah. shoe but if i'm going out and it's like a sexy dinner cocktail vibe i'll wear heels right because you can sit yeah right no because I'm, like i'm, I'm not way. i'm not at that point in my life where it's like i feel like our moms are at this point in our life where it's like they're not gonna buy a shoe that's uncomfortable yeah i'll still buy an uncomfy shoe from time to time I just won't wear it that but the, often. But I also know the intention is I'm sitting. These are like yeah. short distance shoes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and I I'm, I know that there's going to be consequences to wearing these, but yes. I'm still going to do it. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. No, I'm the same way, but like, I'm not going to not. No. Um, bring, Not bringing a purse. See, something for me is... Okay, I was ne- I never had this face, so you'll have to speak to this face. So, no, I never... I was always a purse gal. Yeah, you are a purse gal. For mm-hmm. me, like there was moments in my life where like I just was like, I don't really want to carry a purse. Like I always have other people to like have the keys or whatever and like I would have See, like See, my issue is I don't trust anybody mm. to keep track of shit. And I know even at my motherfucking drunkest I've ever been, I've kept track of my shit. See, but the thing for me was like when I like everyday life, I would carry one. Mm-hmm. Going out, never wanted to have one. I just put my like stuff in the back of my phone do whatever mm-hmm. put it in a pocket put it in my bra that's what i would yeah. do and i would not take a purse out because i didn't care about the gum i didn't care about the deodorant oh. i didn't care about none of it like in my brain i was just like i'm going out and i need as little things as possible yeah and that was it i feel like this might be different for like gen zers who are in college right now because like back in our day in college the crossbody was like the purse yeah. at the time so it was it was easier to take a purse out because like for me, like I had this like super thin strapped, like little tiny. It was probably like eight inches by four inches, little one zipper bag that I took every single time I went out. And it was perfect because like I could literally cross it over my back. I could still dance on it, like whatever. It wasn't in the way. But I feel like for Gen Z now, the trend is like just the little teeny tiny, like right under like a little shoulder bag. Mm-hmm. That's not practical when you're going out because like you can't like not use your hands or like whatever yeah. so i feel like in our era of going out it was a lot easier to bring a purse yeah <clears throat> i think and not that like you can't wear that type of purse now but it's just like not on trend right but i feel like now for me personally like i'm gonna have a purse 100 percent of the time with me no matter where i go no matter what i'm doing like for sure like for a, a long period of my life i never had a bag with me never yeah, that's crazy because i always use like a little card holder mm. always i've always used a little card holder so like that's just like a little like fits in your pocket yeah i hate having things in my pocket but now but see i didn't at the time because mm. it was like convenience but now i'm gonna have a bag because i think like it like adds more to the outfit it, like it takes i'm trying to get better at like styling styling mm-hmm. like i'm not just wearing my clothing i'm styling my clothing and a bag helps with that it so does and like also now I'm a lip gloss girly. Like I've always liked That's chapstick. My thing. <laughs> I've always liked chapstick, but I'm a lip gloss girly now. So like I have to have it. Then I also like to have deodorant with me and like Well, also you're carrying cash. Yeah, so like now. you can't just fold well, that into like a should, little We should publicize that. Well, <laughs> I'm just saying like for me, like that it was a reason why I would always carry a purse because like when I worked at my dance studio, I would get paid like for private lessons, either with like cash or like a Venmo or something. So like whenever I would get like a couple hundred bucks cash, like at a lesson or whatever, I was like, fuck. So I got like a long wallet where I can like put my 
cash in that yeah and that was also a reason i always carried a purse because i always had cash on me and you had a long wallet exactly so it was like i had to fit this in a purse and i didn't want to fold my cash weird and stuff it into like a little card holder so like i just that was also something i got used to yeah no that's that was an era that i had in my life but now i just i can't imagine not having some sort of bag with me i think i would feel like i forgot something also my keys are just aggressive i have like 75 keychains on it like i gotta keep it in a bag that would be so annoying to carry i think this next one is an emily topic because for me i just have always been a braless daddy um i wore strapless bras probably in middle school and then i Mm. stopped wearing bras altogether so yeah so i i wrote down like strapless bras and the reason i say this is because there was an era in honestly like i'm gonna say like high in towards the end of high school like junior senior year into like the beginning of college where those fucking like peep show shoulder tops were in you know what i'm talking about where it was like yeah where it was like a tank top and then like the sh- your the the worst part of your arm was exposed it was like the end of your shoulder <laughs> yeah top of your like bicep would be out and then it'd be like the shirt it's again. just the least flattering part of your entire yeah that arm. was like the cutest thing to wear yeah and like th- what are they called i think they're called cold shoulder tops or something mm. like something like that anyways so for those i was like well i have to wear a strapless bra because like i don't want you seeing my bra straps or like whatever and then there was also like the strapless top era or the like scarf top era where it was like all these strapless things and if you have big boobs like myself or i feel like i'm one of those people though that's like you don't you wouldn't know i have big boobs because i don't ever really wear tight fitting clothes but like i do and so i would wear a strapless bra because i'm like like my shit is going to be yeah i wanted almost like cleavage but now i'm at that point in my life where it's like i don't care about the cleavage because it's not like my boobs are saggy because they're not that big to where Mm -hmm. they're like too heavy but like at the time i was like but i want the push-up cleavage vibe and that's only gonna come if i wear a bra yeah today i couldn't tell you last time i purchased a bra i don't own a strapless bra and i i have two bras one is a hand-me-down from my mom that i don't know how it ended up in my drawer but somehow i have it i think she may have given it to me because it like was too small or something because like i don't know it might have been from that um what's that bra company that does the like crime junkies always does like the podcast where they're like we give a bra away and it's a perfect cup size and i don't pay attention because i don't wear them anyways it was like one of those like ads on like a podcast or something and i think my mom got one of those for some reason didn't like the fit but instead of sending it back she was like here you can have it i'm like okay it doesn't fit me good either and then the other bra i have is actually a skims bra which fucking sucks and anybody i'm sorry i'm so tired of everybody acting like skims is the best ever it's cheap as fuck the underwire came out of my bra and like stabbed Mm -hmm. my boob within three months of wearing that shit and also all their compression stuff and like shapewear is only good for people who like have not always been wearing shapewear because like if you're og with shapewear you would know that stuff is like bottom of the barrel like tj maxx like it's not compressing shit it's for the skinny gals it's for the girls with the flat stomachs already it's not like really compressing anyways but those are the only two bras i own so those skims one i don't wear because it's fucking broken and the other one doesn't really fit me either and i've only ever worn them recently because like it was like at work one of my shirts that i was wearing was like somewhat see-through so i was like fuck i have to wear this bra yeah but like i haven't bought a bra and i actually tell you how i've long. been <coughs> i like honestly either don't wear a bra i wear a sports bra or i have like those like comfy lounge like bras have like the v in them and like mm-hmm. it's like they're just like keep your boobs in but like they're super fucking comfy and they're like <laughs> what material. i'm wearing right now is a is a camisole that i chopped off oh mine is and it is this. not a bra it is a it's a actual tank top from mm, old navy i believe that i just cut in half mine looks like a swimsuit top like right yeah now. and mine's completely see-through so if i actually lift it up my whole areola the size of the biggest salami you've ever seen would be visible <laughs> goodbye <laughs> but no i literally like i don't wear bras but i was thinking the other day because like we're just like, push-up bras in general like, i used bras. to like have my, my my boobs like are not big so like they're just there right mm-hmm. like they're just here they are but they used to be like up like 
probably like a nice like little centimeter. So like even like nobody the little, talks about that happening. Even like the little like the cleavage <laughs> right. was like up a little bit, and yeah, it was like yeah, always yeah. like cute and like whatever. Mm-hmm. And now, not that they're saggy, because again, I only have a hand size full of boobs. Like mm-hmm. I don't really have much going on here, but they used to be up like another like mm-hmm. a little bit, and I'm like, God, this sucks. It does suck because, because my nipples also used to be like the perfect like honestly so i used to have my nipples pierced and like it was like little porn star boobies like mm-hmm. they looked so good but now i'm like damn yeah that like centimeter drop really just yeah and nobody and nobody talks about that because it's not like they got bigger because i agree like the same thing happened to me it's like not like my boobs got bigger they just kind of fell a bit yeah but and not like, much no but like a bit because like they're not saggy to the point of where it's like if i have no bra on it's like falling yeah. down but it's not as high as they used to be yeah and i'm like but what changed just your skin like no the- i just i'm not like i've never had a i don't have a kid like i feel like that's exactly. like everyone's like oh wait till you have a kid like your boobs are be different like but i never had a kid so like right. what's going on here also no one's talked about this okay and me and my coworkers were talking about this the other day the periods that you get in your mid to late 20s what's up with are that are quite literally wild yeah. like why do i have every symptom of pregnancy every single time i have my period at this point and why it's crazy. and why are they so like random with the symptoms like it's not consistent it's not like every month like okay my my cramps are significantly worse than they were when i was 19 but at least I know that's going to happen every month. It's like one month it's that. The next month it's like I'm bleeding. Like I should probably go get like a like IV drip yeah. because I'm losing so much blood. The next month it's like I'm nauseous or I have headaches for like four days in a row. Or like it's all it's so fucking like, random. Even like the memory. Like I, I feel like people are like baby brain. Like I feel like you get that sometimes too where you're like oh I just forgot. Like simply forgot. Like mm-hmm. I, just every single thing. Like the cravings are Do you think wild. it's because it's like your most fertile time in Life. so we were talking about this and we were like we either think it was that or it's like almost like your body preparing you for pregnancy because like this is like the ages where you start like yeah having a kid mm-hmm. but like also i truly believe like and not to like freak anybody out but like i truly believe in like 10 years research is going to come out about like the long-term side effects of birth control mm-hmm. and i mean there already is stuff right now i know but like it's going to be like a tell-all well, documentary they, style like, and like people are going to like the data is finally going to back up the claims everybody's had for years and years and years of being like this is destroying women's bodies right well so i like we've been off it so some of the girls I was talking to like are still on it. Some are not like, so it was like a collective, like mm. we all are having like the same thing. So like, it's not even like a birth control, like driven things. At first I was like, when I first got off birth control, that, that first year was crazy for my period. Yeah. And like, I talked to my doctor about it. She's like, I don't really think that you have like PCOS or anything like crazy. But I was like, I swear that I do because like, this is insane. Like mm-hmm. I should not have to be dealing with this. And then like, I like talked to her about it and she was like, no, whatever. But then I also think so many doctors are so quick to jump on to stuff like that. Like, thankfully, she was like, this is like a really like natural pill if you want to take it to like help. Well, try, like, yeah, the first thing to do is like, oh, we'll just put you on more birth control. Right. And like medicate you more yeah. or like give you like a name to like whatever. But it's really just like our bodies legit prayer preparing to have a child. Yeah. Because it's like the like you said, like our most fertile ages. Yeah. And like. I really think that because like, she talked to me about that, but like it only clicked like recently. I was like, oh, right. But yeah, no one talks about that. Like your mid to late 20s, your period is wild. Well, and then what I am like interested to like learn, not really experience because like I don't aging terrifies me and not in like the way that I look, but it's more of like the way my body feels like even this past year with like training and running i've realized like my body's just not the same as it was before recovery wise or like my joints and like yeah my whatever so i would also be like interested to learn like like not menopausal but like okay you're past the point of like fertility really right. of, like prime fertility you're like 38 right then what right well so you know like, what okay. i mean like i don't know if like this like okay going back to like what we were like saying like all of that to say like ties in just hang on with me here (laughs) like 
one thing I just am not willing to do again, like now as I'm older, is like even going out and drinking or staying up super late. Like I stay up late from my job, but like I'm going home and going to bed. Like people like who are younger than me are going out and they're partying. They're up till 6 a.m. and they're coming to work the next day. Like, no, because my body's going to hurt. Mm-hmm. And like I'm going to be so deathly tired. And like it's going to take me four days to catch up on the sleep. Like, well, also my hangover like is, is going to start worse. like and end in like four business days exactly like <laughs> but that's how i feel like that's what i'm saying like back to like that point yeah. of like like wh- how is it like i think now like how is this gonna hurt me <laughs> no like literally for days. like how is like and then like i've been doing pilates actually this past week i've been doing it almost every single day and i felt really good about it because i'm like i feel like i want to be in my soft girl era i want right to i dude the moment I, I have the money i am literally doing pilates and like that's gonna be like my workout no i feel like i want to be in my soft girl era Same. right now i don't really like i still want to go I want, with like, weights and cozy stuff cozy exercise yeah like i don't want to feel like i don't want to hurt all the time like literally i don't and i feel like that's just like not fun as no, you get older like it's not it like, sucks i still want to go like i still love crossfit i still want to go do it i still want to mm-hmm. like go lift weights but like doing it every single day is not needed for me anymore well, like quite literally destroyed your body no but like <laughs> i mean my body looked great no no but no but also like, like your shoulder like no, it literally destroyed a part of your body no literally like, destroyed me <laughs> i was always like something always hurt yeah like, that's something about like getting older and working out and like even going out drinking staying up late like mm-hmm. something's gonna hurt no and like so i'm bad. just not worth like on sunday it was so funny i went to work and like everyone was like you look like you had great sleep this weekend i'm like no you guys just all went out all weekend long and are all hung over and you all look like shit yeah because you've done drugs and alcohol and stayed up till eight in the morning to be here at 10 like mm-hmm. you just all look like shit i will say i'm going to bed and i'm going to get sleep yeah i will say and like this is no hate on anybody because I did the same yeah, like, fucking who are we? shit. Yeah. I will say that shit ages you like nobody's fucking business. Yeah. And like I look back on like photos of me when I was like in college or like my peak party era and my face looks significantly like older in mm. like age in my hair in my skin. Yeah. Than it does now that I'm not drinking or staying out late or like doing drugs or like whatever yeah. like it is crazy how much it really does i like, literally tell when you're in that party girl era you look like oh. you've seen a lot no my <laughs> so my coworkers, like even though some of them are my age and younger and older mm-hmm. like are in the party girl era mm-hmm. party boy era because of just the industry that it is right you're like you're up late you're stressed out like yeah you're you're nine people five are doing coke random. like it's nobody's business like yeah. it just, that's an industry-wide thing it's not like our, my restaurant like, no, that's no, no, an no, industry-wide yeah, yeah, thing totally but like for me like so i'm like part of me like understands like oh okay i get why like you're doing uppers because like whatever but i'm yeah. also like but i literally am in this industry work 60 hours as well and i don't need them so like yeah. it's also like a you have to give and take and people are always like oh like what like are you gonna come out with us you're gonna go out i like, was my response most likely all the time is I'm not going to get fat because of alcohol because right now I don't have the time to like work out and like dedicate my life to like that Mm -hmm. health and fitness. So I'm like, I'm not going to get fat because of it because I'm going to eat like shit. I'm going to feel like shit the next day and then I'm going to keep eating like shit Mm -hmm. and alcohol is so much sugar. I'm not doing it. And I'm also not going to be broke because of drugs and alcohol. Yeah. I'm not doing it. Those are the two things that I won't do and that's why I'm not going to go out. I'm Mm going to go home and go to bed. Yeah. Yeah. That's always my response. Yeah. Mine is um because I spend too much money because I turn into like fucking I don't know the richest a, a rich Gates. a rich prince of like Egypt or some shit where I'm like I buy everybody drinks right now. We all drink on me. I got this knowing I don't putting on my credit card occurring debt. You would not believe like I was talking to my parents about this because I don't think anybody realizes like how bad it was when I was drinking because I had done it for so long. I was so easily able to like, it was obvious I was fucked up and like blackout drunk, but I wasn't like crawling on the floor, like unable to speak, like puking everywhere. You know what I mean? Like I was like the fun drunk where it was like, yes, she's very fucked up. But like at the end of the day, like she could get home. Mm -hmm. And because of that, I don't think people like realize like how big of a problem it was. If you go back and look at like my credit card statements or my like uh bank account shit from when I was in that era, I was dropping like three to four hundred dollars a night on drinks for myself and for others. But like for myself, I was drinking like fifteen drinks 
at one bar like chugging them down no she was i would <laughs> i wouldn't even be like four sips in before she'd be like you want another I'm like, yeah <laughs> no but because like it was just like i was just that was normal and like you get to a point where it's like six doesn't do it anymore so then you got to go to 10 and 10 kind of like i feel good but i could feel better mm-hmm. so i'm gonna go to 15 and like the financial toll it takes on you and then the way it just makes you fucking feel like ass yeah and also your immune system is really bad too yeah like that's another thing but like yeah the the party girl era definitely ages you and also like all the other pieces of it like once you hit a certain age it's too hard right and like when people would talk about that they were like no like oh, i just get so hung over i was like i don't get that because like i would just like puke and rally the next day and like feel fine and then once you hit that it's like 24 yeah once you turn 24 you can't do that yeah you can take all the tylenol you can drink all the water you can eat all the food you want your body will not let you i'll i'll see you guys on next friday yeah because until then i'm a hermit because i cannot yes and like together. wasting your life away well, see, but that's a big that's like a big thing for me like i just like i'm not willing to do that and like also the hours that i work are like pretty strenuous so like i need to be my best self in those hours yeah. that's how i feel like that to me is like more important than like going out and getting fucked up and like do i go out and have like a drink or two but like i can yeah. see myself out mm-hmm. we're like a lot of people it doesn't stop when like no hate no shade like do you like yeah. legit i'm not here to judge like i really don't give a shit because like mm-hmm. but for me yeah no i can't work hungover it doesn't work for me like yeah. i also like when i do that then i start making worse decisions in my life of like not working out not eating good not taking care of myself and like right i don't want to do all those things mm-hmm. so like i always like now i say i'm like I don't want to be fat because of alcohol. Like if I am going to gain weight, I want it because I ate good ass food. <laughs> like, right, right. I right, want it to right, be because right. of like something that I enjoyed. Right. Like I enjoyed the alcohol for about fifteen minutes. Well, and, and the then next I was day, over. You're like, I'm never drinking again. Right. Like, like, like you, I don't you feel want so that. terrible. I don't. I don't like yeah. the ups and downs of that feeling. And mm-hmm. like, yeah, getting older too. Like it just stays there so much longer. Like it's not fun. It does. Like it, it's fun. Don't get me wrong. Like going out and having a couple of drinks, if you can do it and like handle it and do your thing, like mm-hmm. great. And like, it's great to like go meet up with friends, have a whatever, but like every night all the time getting blocked out. But even it. like back to what you're saying about like the body thing, like that's the whole reason. Like if, if it's a standing night, like I'm not wearing uncomfy oh. shoes because even like I I don't drink obviously so like when I go out I don't have that hangover but if I'm like doing certain things like if I didn't drink enough water that day and I had too much sodium at dinner my I feel feet like hurt exactly my, my feet but are also, swollen but also like I feel like shit. the pants even the pants like I'm not wearing like certain types of pants too like oh my gosh for like if I if I know I'm gonna be sitting down like I'm not I'm wearing comfy sit down no, because pants. the way and I'm not gonna never now I'm at a point where like my pants need to be universal i'm not they're not just stand-up pants no because the way in college like we would wear pants that are like it, you couldn't sit in them no but you the couldn't thing is, and like, like they were standing only pants and like that was normal and yes. so like if we went to a bar it doesn't matter how fucking bad your feet hurt you're fucking standing up because you literally can't sit down and if you yeah. do sit down you have to unbutton your pants yeah but the thing about those pants too is like there's no give so like, when you have one drink there are you're even Mm-mm. more uncomfortable so because bad. like drinking makes you bloated right also so, like, you're just like boop yeah instant. and also what you realize like when you don't care about like being hot and sexy when you go out you can't shake your ass in those pants no. so like it's better to wear baggy shit anyway no, because like, you're just trying to be the cool girl in the corner yeah. and i want to be the crazy girl and i just was fun. never the cool girl in the corner like i'm always going to be the girl who's like the bouncer is like okay she's got to get out of here no but i'm saying like if you wear <laughs> if you wear standing only pants like you have to legit just be like exactly it's a tame night <clears throat> yeah it doesn't matter if you or want, you just you're just so uncomfortable too like you can't yeah. even like think about being the crazy girl Mm -hmm. like you will be for like a moment and then it like all hits you and you're like yeah i think that's like another that's like another point like before we like wrap this up but like it's just like (laughs) buying clothes that like actually fit you yeah not caring about like oh well i'm a 28 in these pants so like i should be a 28 in these pants like i'm gonna make it work like yeah because there was a point in my life where i was like no like i'm a medium so I'm going to get the medium. And it's like, bitch, it's not giving. Like, you just bump it up. Yeah. Like, it's okay. Nobody no, nobody sees the size. And also, like, you're going to be more comfortable and it's going to look way fucking cuter to, like, get your fucking size. Yeah. But I know. I know. There's a couple more in my head that we could, like, go over. But, like, honestly, I feel like we could do this forever. Oh, my God. <laughs> just, totally. Like, shit. Just, like, with age, 
that you realize. And like the thing is like I, you don't realize the difference between 26 and 22 in terms of experience. And like I was like thinking about this today. Honestly. When I was 22, I was like, I got it together. No. And before I came over today, I was literally thinking like a, we were 23 three years ago. Mm -hmm. that's not even that long ago but i and we started this yeah Yeah. but like even just like watching literally watching us grow up in those three years it's a visually like we look totally different because like aesthetically and like our look and whatever but like just the shit we talk about and like the things we like are that are important in our lives it's just like it's wild how much you do change in your 20s And like how how like things that you really cared about or like thought really mattered really don't. No, yeah. And like people always say that like, oh, well, you'll realize when you're older, like you'll you'll understand. But like I feel like such an old lady being like, I'm not wearing my fucking heels out because my feet are gonna hurt <laughs> and like whatever, whatever. But like it is so true. Like yeah. moms, y'all were right. Yeah. I'll give it to you. You were right. I'm sorry that I yelled at you that I didn't want that jacket on. I'm sorry I called your shoes ugly. I'm they so- <laughs> they really are ugly 90% of the time. I'm not going to I'm not even going to hold that one back. Like I'm not going to retract that statement because I uh, look. I love my mom, but some of her shoes are fucking ugly. But I get it because now I'll wear my quote cute shoes and my feet hurt really bad. So I I do understand. Yeah. But let's just say you guys are right. Whatever. Yeah, this is like learning that your parents are they're they right. they know what they're talking about. Yeah. They've been around on, the block. On some things, they got it. You know, sometimes I really want to know, like, who my mom was as, like, a 22-year-old or a 21-year-old. Yeah. Because, like, she, you know, you tell stories and, like, you hear shit. And, like, as you get older, you have these conversations with your parents where it's, like, you're, it's more, like, friendship conversations yeah. of, like, you know, talking about life and, like, shit that you've done and, like, whatever. But, like... I feel like for my dad, I've heard his whole story. Like, I know everything that he's done because, like, he's kind of had, like, a crazy life. And, like, I don't know. Like, he's, like, proud of his life and, like, all this stuff. And, like, my mom, I don't. Like, I know parts of her life. But, like, there's other things that I don't know. And so, like, I would love to, like, her to just spill the tea. Like, you know what Mm, I mean? Like, because I feel like for us, we have this, like, thing. So, like, well, hypothetically, like, if we have kids one day... They'll it, be able to see this thing. Exactly. Like, they'll be able to see, like, literally who we were in yeah. this point in time. And, like, everybody in the world, their kids can do that now because of social media and because, like, your digital footprint. And, like, you can go back and see and be like, oh, my mom was this type of person or, like, my mom was this type of person or, I don't know, maybe you didn't have mom. <laughs> that sucks. But... <laughs> or sad. <laughs> but, like... It's just, I feel like for my mom, like, I don't know that, like, I know her, but I don't know her. So the thing is too, like, I understand too, because like your mom like met your dad a little bit later in life. Like my mom already had my dad at this point in her life. Mm -hmm. Right. So like all of my life, like they've been together since they were in high school. Yeah. Right. So like, that's where I'm like, okay, like you never really went out and like dated and like had to be in like the scene of like, right find somebody like you found him in high school which is like great like there's Mm -hmm. beauty in both sides right but then like when she talks about like her ex-boyfriend that she had before my dad i'm like whoa 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 whoa. yeah but you had a you had an ex-boyfriend because like who like was a bad boy like in and out of jail like at the time like mm -hmm. in high school and i'm like whoa 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 like yeah crazy and like the tea of it and i'm like that's so weird like even like from my dad being like you had other people like Mm -hmm. or other interests outside of like my mom because like they've known each other for literally ever but like yeah. for you it's like not that i think it is like still weird it's like well that's my dad like how did you have anybody else yeah but dad but it still is like okay they met at an older age so like you'd understand that they right they have other people but the thing is like what's i don't know i'm not trying to like air my mom's fucking business and her life or whatever but this is just like such a funny story and then we can like wrap up because this is going long but so my mom and my dad both were married before they met each other however i did not know that i didn't know my mom had a previous husband because she didn't have kids like that's the reason obviously i know my dad was because like i have a half brother so yeah. like not that it meant he was married but like one plus one equals two there was somebody else involved yeah, in the yeah. picture yeah. and like you know so and i also grew up with like 
knowing my brother's mom like not really but like we would run into each other and like whatever right and so i knew of her but then my mom i didn't know she was married before and when i was in my freshman year of college i rushed the sorority and before we like had our like bigs like our big sisters or whatever who were like upperclassmen who would like i don't know not mentor but like you would become a family and like you'd get each other gifts and like go to events and shit together whatever we did like this like part of it where we would go on like dates with other people in the sorority to like find a good fit to like figure out like you know and this girl from my hometown dm'd me who i was friends with when i was younger and was like hey this girl is in your sorority and she like says that she knows you and like wants to go on like a fi date with you my sorority is fine you so like that's what we called them and i was like oh okay cool and she was like i just thought i would introduce you guys because like i went to high school with her because she was from like where i was born or whatever i was like okay cool so i go on this date with her and we're like we went and got ice cream and we're like hanging out and she was like so my dad was married to your mom and i was like i what like i don't think i was like my mom is married to my dad like, what are you talking about like I was, like I was like either are you saying that we're related and my dad is your dad or like what are you saying because like i didn't know my mom had like a previous husband and she was like no yeah my dad used to be married to your mom before he like married my mom or whatever and i was like oh i think of the wrong woman <laughs> weird like and it was so weird and then i called my mom i was like so little birdie told me you had a ex-husband <laughs> and like and she was like oh god and then it was just it was so funny because she was like she was like of course he said some shit to like his daughter about like you being there she yeah. was like she was like oh, of course he did like like and man it was, it was just yeah. so funny because it's like my mom had a whole ass life before i was in the world yeah i don't know about it and not because like i don't think that she would tell me but like it's i feel like a lot of so insignificant in her life well and now and for moms i feel like the way that dads are a bit different where dads like talk about the glory days and stuff i feel like for moms like there's this part that society puts on them till it's like your life begins at motherhood yeah you need to throw all of your youth away you are a mother and that's all you are yeah and And it's like so I don't feel like she felt the need to tell me all that. but Yeah, like, but I also feel like my mom too is like the same way where mm-hmm. it's like, well, I, I know stories of her and like also since my mom and my dad have been together for so long, like there's yeah. so many stories together. So like we just know like a lot, but it also is like we don't about my mom. Like I know my yeah. dad's best friends. Like I know my mom, like her best friend, like they like would go out and have fun and do da da da. Mm-hmm. But like all of it is just like kind of like so like, ran over exactly that makes sense. like it's just so like minuscule because also for her like it's like oh well like when you girls were younger mm-hmm. those are the stories that, like, no when totally you girls were younger. yes but i'm like but what were you doing when you were like 19 yeah like like you, what shit were you were you on what like, were you getting into so we went what was like the my, trouble you were causing we went through like my parents like or well, my mom's parents house like when we were putting them into a retirement home and like going through her like childhood bedroom like finding like all the little like love notes mm. even from like my dad like yeah that's like, so crazy the little love notes and like little pictures and like oh yeah, yeah my mom, my mom be like oh yeah he like took me on this date and i was mm-hmm. like that's so, like tell me more like yeah I, like, this is tea like i want to know or like even like this sounds like so stupid right but like my mom's like old contacts were there oh. like in solution and i was like you had contacts like that right. was so crazy to like like she has like lasik now and like mm-hmm. had glasses like for nighttime but like i was like oh you had contacts like, right this is crazy like these are my mom's contacts like it was like the craziest thing mm-hmm. i don't know like little stuff like that yeah and it's like it makes me wonder like would we have been friends you know what i mean yeah. like would would me and my mom have been friends if we existed in the same time period and well, like personally i would say yes because me and my mom are like the same person i don't think me and my mom well but the thing is me and my mom are so similar now but like i don't know how she was when she was 20 something yeah, I, no, you know I, what i mean like i feel like we would have been this we would have been friends i want to say i don't know i don't know about if me and my mom would have like she's like the bestie I feel like my Kira's best person down. ever yeah but like that's the thing like i just don't know but like you have to ask her tonight i know well i'll ask her when i'm home this weekend but <laughs> it's just one of those things where it's like i feel like for women we especially can have a tell all. 
episode yeah we could <laughs> i mean she doesn't have like a nine to five so like it's not like or she, she has, has like well or it's not like she has like hr policy where it's like oh i can't yeah. disclose when i did cocaine or whatever yeah it's like okay who cares but the i just think it's so interesting how like a lot of times and i feel like this is super common with most girls and their moms it's like you know so much about your dad because he just like tells everything like i could tell you my dad's entire fucking life from like when he was five years old until like everything he's ever done with like See, the moves he's made and like the career path, not everything in de- in detail, but like I know this, his story, you know, yeah. cause like he shares it. But with my mom, it's like whenever she shares stories, you're so right. It's like, Oh, when you guys were little yeah. or like it, w- she'll share stories, but it's like about her family. Yeah. But I'm like, but I did hear through the grapevine you did some like fuck ass shit back in the day. So like, what was that about? Cause I want to know because like, you made me feel bad about it, but like, yeah, but also like, yeah, but then, then again, like my parents were both like super not strict, like whatever. So I'm also like, so I know y'all were some badasses, like not in like a cool way, but like y'all caused some problems. Cause it's like the stuff you let me get away with. True. <laughs> True. I have some friends, like, I have some friends like I was in high school and like, her like younger sibling uh had weed and like the dad found the weed and they were like you can't have it like blah, yeah blah, blah, blah. and then he invited his friends over and they smoked in the backyard <laughs> <laughs> he like put on the show yeah he was, and like, was like i got a dad yeah and then he was like but i'll take the weed no he was like you can't have it i'm flushing it down the toilet like he yeah the whole like scene and she was like oh my god and then but like he literally invited his friends over they smoked it in the back and she was like what the fuck yeah <laughs> I was like, we, yeah, like, that's what you get. <laughs> that's so funny. Oh my gosh. Well, yeah, growing up is a, it's interesting. Yeah. And we're all learning as we go. Mm-hmm. But I guess like all of this to say like we, our mothers are wise. Yeah. And we should listen to them a little bit. But listen also at the same mom. time, we have to learn ourselves. No, like, exactly. I think that's, that's the, the whole works. point. Like those girls in bikinis, that's a canon event. Yeah, Like exactly. in their life, they have to go through that pain of freezing their literal tits off yeah on halloween to realize it's okay to wear a sweater yeah like you should bundle up yeah and like okay bikini's cute at the bar yeah bundle up take the jacket off in the bar like let the tits out Uh, this is not what the spiel was about like no i want you to like look sexy and hot and like slutty like that is what halloween is for i love a slutty costume but wear a jacket when it's 28 yeah. degrees outside. Like, you know, just like the sensibleness <laughs> of it all. Yeah. But anyway, thank you guys for listening to another episode of Society 7. My name is Kelly Marquet. You can find me at Kelly Marquet on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube. And I'm Emily. You can find me on Instagram, TikTok, and YouTube at Starnzy. Don't forget to follow the podcast on Instagram as well. We are at society97.pod where you can DM us things that you would never do anymore now that you're an adult that you used to do when you were hot and young and sexy and wild. And we're also on TikTok at Society97Pod where we post clips from the show. And we do our YouTube channel every single Tuesday and Friday. And on Tuesdays we do the... Oh my God, what am I saying? I'm so sorry. I was like, I was like ahead of myself. On Tuesdays we post like fun little videos. They're all different every single week. This past week we did uh, part two of um dating horror stories so definitely go check that out those ones are wild those yeah. i think wilder than the podcast they so you definitely, definitely want to hear those ones <laughs> we saved the freak ones for, for the, the youtube, YouTube. <laughs> so go over there and then on fridays we do the video version of the podcast so if you want to see our beautiful faces check that out so yep. make sure to subscribe like turn on post notifications we love to hear from you guys over there and uh we'll see you guys on friday okay bye okay bye